So we've spent the last few years building up our selection of LS engine parts, including our exclusive line of Summit Racing Pro LS parts. We're talking Pro LS camshafts for cars and trucks and boost, Pro LS cranks and rods and pistons and rotating assemblies, Pro LS intakes and valve train, and now Pro grade turbos from 66 to 88 millimeters. Plus, we already carried LS parts from companies like TrickFlow and turbos from the likes of VS Racing and others. Basically everything needed to build a 1,000 horsepower LS with off-the-shelf parts. But it's one thing to say it and another to prove it. So Project 1000 was born. We're aiming for 1,000 horsepower at the rear wheels using all parts out of the Summit catalog, including and starting with an LS engine block that we rescued from our own parts bin. So we know we've got a Gen, uh, the late Gen 3 block, um, which we suspected we did. This is our Summit uh, cam bearing driver for LS. It's specifically sized for the LS cam journal bearing size. And when you get your box of cam bearings, uh, usually inside it'll, there will be a guide or a code that says what position, what bearing goes where, because they're not all the same. So in this case, we have an SH1995A goes in position one and five. It's hard to see on a camera, but this has the SH1995A number stamped in it. These two go in position one and five. This is SH2124. These two go in position two and four, four in the block. And then this SH2125 actually goes in the number three position. So you wanna make sure you keep those in the correct order while you're installing their cam bearings because uh, the cam won't spin very freely and it'll usually lead to a, a problem of a spun cam bearing, low oil pressure or something along those lines. So what you've seen here is we've taken the uh, engine block off the table, put it back on the engine stand. Uh, we verified that it had, you know, the, the, the oil holes were, you know, aligned, you know, it's going to get oil to it. Uh, the next step is, is let's make sure that, you know, everything is in there right, that the bearings aren't cocked, that the cam goes in smooth and doesn't have any tight spots. Uh, you know, some people will have a, a tool to do that, you know, just for a cam installation tool. In a pinch, if you don't have that with an LS cam, you can use a half inch drive uh, extension. And uh, what Mike is doing now is loading up that cam with some cam lube after carefully cleaning the cam. Always want to clean a cam because even though it looks pretty out of the box, uh, there, there's you know machining, there's dust, everything inside. So you got to clean that thing in and out with engine brushes. Which we've done. Which we've done. Let's see. We'll take our Summit Pro LS camshaft. Carefully slide it through. So far, like a glove. Beat them all up. And Mike is supporting the front of the cam with his fingers as they uh, go through every cam bearing. So far, so good. Nice no so tight good. spots. Nice. It's nice and smooth, nice and free. It's, we'll give it a nice it's full aligned. 360. Yeah. Can't get any torque on that bearing on that pin, so it's uh, it feels very nice. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. While Brian's been miking the crank, I've been busy uh, installing the uh, the half shells of the main bearings into the block. Um, this is if you look on the back of every bearing shell, you'll see the part number and it states upper, and the upper shell goes into the engine block. You've got an upper number right there. It says a standard part number. You've got the tang. Tang lines up in the groove. You just press it down in. Line up the tang first, tang side first. Put your tang in there. I, usually, I like to put my thumb right on the parting line, hold it in place, and then press her right down in there until it, you'll feel it. Find home, center up. Over here we've got our caps, 
And you'll see on the cap, that is the lower half of the shell. And the lower is actually in the main cap as it's running in the engine. It's, going, it's upside down. The H bearings were a little bit too tight. The Clevite HXs were a little bit too loose. Better to be a little too loose than a little too tight. But what good engine builders do is they'll mix and match uh, as necessary across the entire engine to just arrive at that perfect number. For us, that range we're looking for is anywhere from two thousandths and seven tenths to three thousandths and two tenths. For the power that this engine is producing, that's what we're looking for. So, what we ended up doing with number five, number four, number two, and number one was running the H's and the HX's, so basically one bearing shell of each. And in the center, we ended up leaving that because it's a thrust bearing. It's never bad to have a little bit of extra clearance there. Uh, we ended up running the HX bearings on both halves. So it's a mix and match, but you know, the, when you go through the entire lineup now, uh, it spun great. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. So I'll take this off, which we're using to measure thrust. So we've got a nice spin to it. It's just with some normal oil. There's no tight spots, it just feels good. Uh, one thing to look for when you're spinning a crank is, does it stop at one place repeatedly or is it always kind of random where it stops? And this one is good. We're in good shape with that. Our rotating assembly consists of our Pro LS cranks and rods and pistons. Cranks and rods are made from 43 forged steel, and the pistons are made from 2618 forged aluminum. So at this point, we've taken all the measurements, you know, from front to back of our rod journals. We've got those numbers recorded, and now at this point, we're going to go ahead and use this uh, to go ahead and set our dial bore gauge and we're gonna go check every one of the rods individually to make sure we have proper clearance. The ring gaps that we chose for this engine are 24 thousandths on the top and 26 thousandths on the second. Yes, it's going to be seeing a lot of heat, you know, but the thing about it is the rings on a Pro LS piston are down a minimum of 275 thousandths and usually more like 300 thousandths, so they're not seeing as much heat as they are with a factory piston, uh, which are known to break with factory end gaps. So 24, 26, and uh, Mike, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Take the top one, thank you. So we're square, our ring is square in, a, in the bore now, and we're gonna start with a 22 thousandths feeler gauge just to see if that doesn't fit the gap. Here's a 23, actually that does fit. 23 fits, so that's our top ring. Take that, that second ring. Notice we were going for 26, 24, it's pretty snug, 25, uh, got a little friction there, Twenty-six. a uh, little more friction, fairly snug there, so we'll call that 26, uh, let me go 27. Yeah, that really won't go. So we'll call that 26. Uh, we know our ring gaps are, are where we set our specs. Now we're ready to put these rings on the pistons and put the pistons in the motor. All right, we're about ready to start putting rings on pistons, but before we do, I want to talk about something called a groove lock spacer. It looks like any other ring, but it's not. And if you get a, uh, one of these in your piston set, it's not a spare, don't throw it away. It's there for a reason. Uh, the purpose of it is, is when you actually try to maximize your ring land thickness 
To do that, you actually drop the oil ring groove down around the pin bore. Well, the problem with that is, is your oil ring, if you didn't have this support, those uh, gaps would eventually rotate around in there and pop loose and you'd have uh, something that started to oil. So a groove lock spacer is basically a shelf uh, for the bottom of your oil ring groove. Um, they're made a couple different ways. Uh, the best way to do it is these have actually a little dimple on, on them to keep them from rotating. When I run my thumb over it, this is definitely popping out toward me. What that means is it drops down into the pin bore here inside the piston. So by virtue of that dimple being down, it can only rotate maybe a total of 12, 13 degrees before it's gonna hit either here or here, and that's what not locks it into place. So groove lock spacer. At this point, uh, crank is laid, it's been really nice. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and drop in some pistons and rods, etc. cetera. Uh, before we do that, we wanna make sure that the bores, they've already been cleaned. We're just gonna go ahead and hit the bores with some ATF here. Got out the gloves, Summit Racing, by the way, very high quality. And we're going through and we're just gonna go ahead and sop down the inside of the bores, make sure everything has a film of oil on it. Our engine uses six and an eighth inch long rods that have been tested over 1200 horsepower in boost application and designed for up to 5,000 feet per minute of average piston speed. If you haven't seen our Summit hammers, they are awesome. Made in USA, really nice pieces. You just drive that baby. Boom. Guide it in. There it is, Mike. solid nice down work. there. ARP 2000 rod bolts offer 200,000 PSI of tensile strength and the dual ribbing on the rod cap offers maximum strength to keep the big ends round. For our twin turbo build, we selected our own Pro LS turbo cams. They're specifically designed to optimize cam timing with turbochargers. The lobes are stable up to 7,000 RPM plus with exhaust lobes opening softly against high cylinder pressure for reduced stress on the valve train. Overlap has been reduced in order to prevent reversion, which is typically seen with higher turbine inlet pressures. This particular cam has a 231 intake duration with 600 lift. Pro LS cams come in distinct stages that give you the idle, spool, and power characteristics that match your engine and turbocharger. 
All Pro LS cams are made with American bearing steel and precision machined on a Landis 3LB CNC grinder with CBN diamond wheels for unmatched quality. Our Pro LS billet adjustable timing sets, like the one that we're using here, provides maximum strength and reliability for your engine build. It's a single row setup and the chains are precision machined and available in standard, 5,000 sunder, and 10,000 sunder lengths for line owned blocks. Our sets work with three bolt performance cams and come in both 1X and 4X configurations to match any LS engine. Captured degree bushings allow them to be advanced or retarded in two degree increments as well for very fine tuning. The oil system we've chosen is a performance of our ProLS cast aluminum oil pan, Melling 10296 oil pump, and Chevrolet Performance 4-inch stroker windage tray. Our ProLS oil pans offer OEM fitment, oil filter mounting, oil cooler provisions, and use OEM style gaskets. They're manufactured with cast aluminum to provide strong, proper structural rigidity and heat dissipation. The pans also include a baffle, oil pickup tube, sump plug, oil filter stud, and oil passage cover. All right, with our short block assembled, we are ready to go to the top end, the intake manifold, the electronics, and then the fun part. We get to choose our turbo system, and then even better, we get to put this engine to the test on the dyno. So beware. Part two is going to be awesome. Definitely check it out.